Beowulf is an old English epic poem in the tradition of Germanic rug legend consisting of more than 3,000 alliterative lines. It is one of the most important and most translated works of all the English literature. The epic poem is divided into two parts. The first part opens in Denmark, where King Rogar has a splendid meadow known as Herald, a place of celebration. However, the happy noise hangers Grendel, a evil monster living in a nearby swamp. For twelve years, the creature terrorizes Herod with nightly visits in which he carries off Rothgar's warriors and hid them. After learning of the Danes' trouble, young Beowulf, the prince of the Gids, now southern Sweden, arrives with a small band of retainers and offers to rid Herod of its master. Rodger is astonished at the little-known hero's daring, but welcomes him. During the night, Grendel comes from the moors, opens the heavy doors and eats one of the sleeping gits. He then tries to catch Beowulf, who refuses to use a weapon. Beowulf grips one of the Grendel's hands with such force that the monster finally wrenches himself free only when his arm is turned off. Mortally wounded, Grandus returns to his swamp and dies. Beowulf then displays the monster's arm in Herod for all to see. The next day, a feast is given in Beowulf's honor. However, while the warriors were sleeping that night, Grendel's mother, another monster, comes to avenge her son's death and she kills one of Rugger's men. In the morning, Beowulf dives into the lake to search for her and she attacks him. They struggle in her dry cave and Beowulf finally kills her with a sword. In the cave, Beowulf discovers Grendel's corpse, whose head he cuts off and takes back to Herod. The Danes rejoice. Rodiger makes a farewell speech about the character of the true hero, and Beowulf, enriched with honors and gifts, returns home to King Egelic of the Gids. The second part of the epic poem deals with Ejelak's death, the death of his son, and Beowulf's succession to the kingdom and his peaceful rule over fifty years. However, the tranquility ends when a fire-breathing dragon becomes enraged after a man steals from its treasure-filled lair. The creature begins ravaging Gidland and the brave but now old Beowulf decides to fight, despite knowing that he will die. The battle is terrible, a painful contrast to the fights of his youth. Painful too is the desertion of all his retainers except for his young kinsman Wiglaf, who comes to his aid. They ultimately kill the dragon but Beowulf is mortally wounded from a bite on the neck. Before he dies, he names Wiglaf his successor. He is cremated on a funeral pyre and his remains are buried in a barrow built by the sea. As his people mourn his death, they also express the fear that, without Beowulf, Gateland will be invaded by nearby tribes. Analysis of the poem Beowulf is a part of the tradition of epic poetry that began with the poems of Homer and Virgil. 
It is not just a simple tale about a man who kills monsters and dragons, but rather a large-scale vision of human history. As in the classical tradition of epic poetry, the poem is concerned with human values and moral choices. The characters are capable of performing acts of great courage, but they are also capable of suffering for their deeds. The main theme of the poem is the conflict between good and evil, exemplified by the physical conflict between Beowulf and Grendel. However, good and evil are also presented in the poem as dual qualities belonging to everyone. The poem also makes clear our need for a code of ethics, which allows members of society to relate to one another with understanding and trust. The epic poem is written in a dialect known as Old English, a dialect that had become the language of its time by about the early part of the 6th century CE, in the wake of the occupation of the Romans and the increasing influence of Christianity. Old English is a heavily accented language, so different from modern English as to appear almost unrecognizable, and its poetry is known for its emphasis on alliteration and rhythm. Each line of Beowulf is divided into two distinct half lines, each containing at least four syllables, separated by the pause and related by the repetition of sounds. Almost no lines in Old English poetry end in rhymes in the conventional sense, but the alliterative quality of the verse gives the poetry its music and rhythm.